Hey guys, my name is Alex Eklund. Currently, I'm a brown belt in the Ritzor Shaolin, and I've been training him for about eight years. What you're about to see is an experiment and a project that I'm happy to finally finish. Before we start, I will quickly tell you my history and why I decided to make this instructional and why it's a bit different from anything else out there today. So I started training Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu in 2006, and I became a lot more serious about it upon meeting my teacher, Ritzor Shaolin. Um, I used to compete in almost pretty much all the local tournaments, maybe uh, six a year, and I have never won a match up until I was a purple belt. Shalon, my other instructor, Marco Sloro, did everything they could, but it was, I was still struggling and I just couldn't get it together. Um, one day, Shalon covered a very basic half guard sweep, um, and it was a sweep that I fell in love with, and I saw a guy by the name of Steve Rosenberg, who's a black belt under Gustavo Dantes, do it a lot in competition, I really liked it. And uh, one day, I was rolling nogi, and I was trying to figure out if I could somehow do this sweep. I remember that I was rolling with one of the training partners and that he was posturing back in my half guard. And I tried to grab his wrist and I tried to do the sweep, but um, he just posted and it was, it was really hard uh, to do it. So I just thought to myself, what if I just walk myself backwards and I can just knock him over like that? And as soon as I did it, somehow it worked. And that was the start to the G-roll. And uh, I became obsessed with it. And alongside some of my training partners, such as Van Flores, uh, Christopher Lackin, Marshall Gelbman, and uh, many others that picked it up, we started to do it in competitions and we started to come up with our own variations off of it. Um, the first tournament I actually won was the New York Open when I was a purple belt. And before that, I've never won a tournament. Um, and uh, after I got my brown belt, I achieved some pretty good results uh, in, in, in many matches. And even in the ones that I've lost, I've used the G-roll in those matches too. Um, but the interesting thing is my biggest claim to fame is actually not myself, it's actually Van Flores. Um, one time when he was in the Boston Open Purple Division, he fought up a weight class and he fought a gentleman by the name of uh, Rick Hahn, who's an Olympian in Judo and he's a, he was a former Bellator champion. And Van, he hit him with one variation, which is the G-roll to the triangle choke. Um, you're actually going to see this later and uh, we're going to be lucky enough to have Van demonstrate it for us. Um, and a lot of people, when they see the G-roll, they think it's just from the half guard. Uh, but the truth is, um, it's mostly from the half guard, but we have a lot of variations um, from the 50-50. Um, we have a variation from the De La Hiva guard. Um, we have a variation from the double guard pull. We have a lot of different variations that I'm gonna share with you guys today, okay? Anyway, while all this was going on, while I was doing the G-roll and some, uh, some of my friends were doing it, um, everybody started to say, oh, Alex, you should, uh, you should videotape it. You know, you should make sure that nobody takes it from you, etc." And you know, for, for me, ever since I was a little kid, I had this like fantasy of, of having something secret and something that's my own that uh, nobody can um, can take. Uh, actually, my, my favorite show when I was a kid was Dexter's Laboratory. Um, so I was, I was always dreaming to have like a big laboratory that nobody knows about. And um, the G-Roll became that laboratory for me. Um, but recently I thought about it a little bit and um, if I wanna become like a true martial artist, if I wanna, you know, really elevate myself to the next level, I gotta get out of my comfort zone. Uh, Giro is, is so comfortable for me, it's pretty much all I do. Um, so I'm, I'm doing this for a couple of reasons. So the first reason is to get out of my comfort zone and because now that everybody's gonna know all, this, all the secrets and I'm gonna give everything away on this, uh, in this next hour. Um, and the second reason is uh, training is really, really expensive, guys. Um, but I wanted to do this a little bit differently. I didn't want to like uh, do marketing and, and make like a website and you know make people sign up for it, which is fine. You know, I just didn't want to do that. Um, so I'm actually going to make this completely free. However, um, if you want, if you like it, you know, which I, I hope you do, um, I'm going to give you my PayPal address at the bottom of the the screen, and the PayPal address is aeklund at gmail.com. But you're you're going to see it later too. And if you want to donate something to me, feel free. And this this money is going to be used to aid my training. My dream is to travel all over the world. Uh, two places I really want to go to is Brazil and Japan um, to train. And I think it's really going to be uh, beneficial for me to, to, to grow. So um, I want to give this to you guys. And yeah, if you want to donate something, uh, feel free. Um, if not, enjoy the instructional and uh, hopefully I'll see you around the, the mats. And if not, I'll, I'll see you on the local competition circuit. All right. Thank you guys. And please enjoy what you're about to see. Hey guys, so the first move that I'm going to show is going to be the regular G, okay, without the roll. So this is the foundation of the G roll and it's the foundation of the whole move, all right? So um, it's very important that you have this move down correctly because if you don't have this down correctly, then the whole system is not going to work, okay? So I'm going to explain to you guys some principles and then we're going to go over this move, okay? So I'm going to start in my half guard here with Chris. Okay, Chris is going to have both knees on the floor. So I'm going to turn around so you guys can see other angles, okay? But right now what I'm doing here is I'm crossing my ankles ankles really firmly around Chris's hip all right so normal half guard players they have a shallow hook with their bottom leg I don't want that guys for the G-roll I want my bottom leg to be in as deep as possible that way if Chris turns around a little bit you have a lot of ankle as opposed to if it was a shallow hook there's no ankle to cross okay so 
when I bring it in, okay, I wanna have a really deep hook. Now, my, my second leg is gonna be parallel on the top. What I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna cross my top ankle over my bottom ankle. As soon as I cross them, what I wanna do is, guys, I wanna squeeze Chris's thigh and his hip together. I'm using my both legs to put pressure on his hip, all right? That's where the G-roll ha uh, has its power. So as soon as I'm starting to squeeze, Chris should feel pressure on this hip, all right? So the G-roll only works if your feet are crossed. When they're crossing, you're producing pressure. If there's no crossing, there's no pressure. It's kind of like a closed guard. You know, if the guard is just, if your legs are open, the guy can just get out of it. Same thing here. I wanna have my feet crossed, all right? So as soon as my feet are crossed, my arms are gonna be assistance to my legs. If Chris tries to open up my legs, I'm gonna be here fighting, okay? If he starts to put this hand through, I'm not too worried about this because when he puts his pressure down, all right, he hugs me, he's only putting pressure on himself, okay? So this is okay for me. Now, the most important thing, guys, from this half guard position, this is just a rule in, in Jiu Jitsu in general. You don't want Chris uh, or your opponent to be able to hug your head. So that's why my hands are gonna be here to defend my head and to defend myself from Chris coming at me, all right? As soon as I'm here, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stretch my body back, okay? So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna stretch my, my back away from Chris, like this. As soon as I stretch my back away from Chris, it's, it's harder for him to, to hug me and to get my head, okay? I'm further away from him, all right? Now my hands are free to go and do a push-up, okay? As soon as they do a push-up, guys, I'm gonna do a small push-up and walk myself back like this. Okay, as soon as I'm here, guys, I come to the top, okay? And now I'm ready to pass Chris's guard, okay? One more time. So here, very important that my feet are crossed and that the bottom hook is very deep, all right? Now, I'm really squeezing on Chris's hip. As soon as Chris tries to hug my head, I'm defending here, okay? If he tries to open up my legs, I'm pulling this away and I'm defending my legs, okay? My arms are assistance to my legs, okay? As soon as I'm here, I'm gonna stretch my body back. Now I do a push-up, and as soon as I do a push-up, I walk myself back. As soon as I walk back, I can turn around, and now I can start to pass the guard. Okay. So guys, this is the first move, okay? And this works very, very well. Um, I've done this move on people that are much heavier than me, and the rule of thumb is this. The stronger your legs are, the strong this position will be. So although I fight at 141, I'm pretty light, this position actually even better for people that are bigger, okay? Some bigger guys that I showed this move to have really, really high success with just this move. You know, if you're really big, if you're 300 pounds, you can do this move, okay? You don't have to do some of the other fancier variations. But if you're smaller and you like barambolos, you like 50-50, we're gonna get through all of that, okay? But this is the first move, and it's also, in my opinion, the most important move of the whole system, okay? And if, if you pick up anything from this DVD, I hope this is the first thing. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys, so now that you saw the first variation, as soon as you start to walk back, yes, people fall over. The reason people fall over is because they're sitting like this. So when you're putting pressure here, they start to fall, and then eventually, they wanna fall back. But, as soon as they started to do this a few times, people got smart. So what they started to do is, as soon as they're in my half guard, they realized that if they post a leg, that now, the pressure, it's very hard to, to fall, okay? So, I figured out a way to do a roll and then end up on the person's back. So this is where the G-roll name comes from, okay? And the G-roll, it's, it's actually a joking name that I'm gonna go over a little bit later. I'm gonna tell you guys why it's called the G-roll and stuff like that. But let's get through the moves and the more important things first. Okay, so let's move back here. So now, I'm here, okay, and I'm going for my first variation. I'm going up and I do a push-up. And now, Chris posts his leg. So now, I'm stuck. But look how much space Chris created. So what I'm actually gonna do is, I'm actually gonna dive my left shoulder, this one, in through there, okay, like this. Boom. As soon as I'm here, guys, I'm gonna take my outside hook, and I'm gonna weave it right here. My left hand stays on Chris's pants. My right hand is gonna go, is gonna reach for his belt. I'm gonna take my left hook out, and now I'm gonna grab his belt with both hands. I'm gonna kick, as soon as I kick, I put my one hook, second hook, and I go for my seat belt grip.
here. Okay, now it's too hard. Okay, it's too hard to get that the first position going, especially if Chris holds me. So now I'm gonna dive here, my hand, grab his pants, grab his pants here, inside over here, grab his belt. Just grab something, okay? Now this leg is gonna go, it's gonna make a hook. I'm gonna take this leg out, and now I have both hooks on Chris's back. As soon as he's here, I'm gonna grab his belt, and now I'm gonna kick, put my hooks, my seatbelt grip to take his back, okay? So guys, this is probably my favorite variation because you go from you know half guard, which is um, not such a great position. You know, if you watch tournaments, a lot of people prefer passing the half guard, and then you go all the way to the back. Okay, so you're taking a shortcut. So instead of sweeping the guy, passing his guard, knee belly mount, taking the back, like a lot of steps, you go straight from half guard all the way to his back. All right, thank you guys. Okay guys, so the next variation, okay, incorporates a little bit of wrestling into the G-roll, okay? So as soon as you start to go taking the guys back, all right, a lot of times guys, especially guys in the small weight classes, are very tricky. And it's, it's hard to put the hooks perfect and grab them without them starting to spin out and turn on you. So I do uh, position a lot the G-roll to a double leg, okay? So as soon as they start to kind of move, I surprise them and I, and I come up for a double leg, okay? So let's, let's look it over. So it starts the same exact way. My ankles are crossed, okay? My feet are parallel. I'm squeezing my knees together. Very important to have a nice pressure, guys, okay? As soon as I'm here, again, I'm gonna go for my first position. Chris is gonna open his leg. As soon as they make a dive, okay? As soon as I'm coming into here, Chris starts to kind of turn into me. As soon as I'm here, boom, I sit up. And I take Chris for a double leg, all right? This, guys, is very, very surprising to your opponent. They never, they never expect you to just come up for a double leg, especially when you're doing this kind of like fancy rolls and, and, and things like that. So I've had a lot of great success with this. Although it looks very simple, it's very, very effective, guys. Okay, again. I'm here, I make my roll, boom, I come up. And sometimes I only do the double leg, even with one hand. And my second hand, I post, and I use my head to, 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 to grab him, all right? So double leg is a very important move to know for grappling in general, okay? So just because it's a wrestling move doesn't mean we can't use it in jujitsu. And, and the points are exactly the same. You get the same two points, all right? As soon as you fall, you have to watch the plata, of course, okay? So if I get here, you know, Bring your elbow in, you know, now I can look to pass Chris's guard and stuff like that, okay? Thank you, guys. <clears throat> okay, guys, so uh, one position that, in my opinion, is extremely powerful that uh, I saw Walid Ismail do back in the day, and that's how I first found out about it, and then I saw Shaolin do it a lot, and Laura do a lot, is uh, the clock choke. So I'm still perfecting the clock choke, um, but if you have a really nice clock choke, you can do the G-roll to the top turtle, and then later you can set up your clock, okay? This works especially because sometimes as soon as you start going to Chris's bag, he kind of tries to flee, okay? So when he flees, I'm gonna follow him and get to the top turtle position. The top turtle position for MMA, self-defense, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu grappling is a good position, guys. So going from the bottom of half guard to the top turtle, it's not bad, all right? Let's give it a try. So I'm gonna be here. Okay, and again, it starts off the same way. I do my push-up, I roll, and here, Chris, because when I start to put the hook in, he tries to run away and maybe turn out. So all I have to do is, I'm gonna pendulum this leg, hug his waist, and look what I'm gonna do with this leg, guys. Boom, I'm gonna bring it back to make sure that he can't run away. As Soon as he does that, I'm gonna take my other hand, hug around his waist, boom, and I'm gonna come in to the top turtle position here, okay? So watch this bottom leg, guys. I'm actually gonna scoop it as I sit up. So I'm gonna go here, and look what I'm gonna do with the bottom leg. I'm gonna scoop it so that his base gets compromised. Now, I'm gonna start to ride on his back. 
I'm gonna take my hand, boom, get it over his hip. I can stay here, all right, eventually, I can go here, start to put my one hook, drop him, put the other hook, or if you like clock chokes, you can start going for the clock choke, okay? So it's important that for me, <clears throat> I can show this position to people that already have good pre-existing submissions, such as the clock choke, such as taking the back from the turtle. So this is a very nice thing for those kind of guys. Sometimes maybe your leg is, maybe you're five foot four and 250 pounds. Does this mean you can't take the back from the G-roll because it's kind of hard for you to swim your leg in? No, go to the top turtle and you're gonna be pretty successful with that. The G-roll guys is for everybody. Anybody can do it, all right? Thank you. Okay guys, the next position is um, a G-roll to the Kimura. Okay, so although this instructional is on the G-roll, the Kimura, in my opinion, is the most powerful submission in all of grappling and maybe in all of mixed martial arts. We've seen Kazushi Sakuraba, Fedor, a lot of guys use it very effectively. Shaolin used to love it in a lot of, a lot of his fights. And uh, even though Guerra got his arm broken with it, it's such a powerful move, guys, that's very underrated. So sometimes people say that it's, you know, it's very strength involved, which it can be, but it's also very technical and you can use the Kimura to sweep to pass the guard, to take the back, turn it into an armbar. You can use it for a lot of other things, okay? Instead of just finishing with the Kimura. So the way I do the Kimura, guys, is a little bit different than a lot of some other people, and I'm gonna touch a little bit on it here, okay? So first, I'm just gonna show the principle of the Kimura, which is very important also for the Jiro to Kimura, okay? So the principles from the regular Kimura that I like to do is, is the same that from the Jiro, and, and you need to incorporate, okay? So we're gonna be here. Okay, so if I'm gonna have guard here, guys, if I grab Chris's wrist, all right, he's just gonna pull out of it, okay? This always used to happen. So the way it's taught is you grab the wrist, then you sit up, and then you hook it, and then you go here. This is the way it's taught, which is fine, but I am not a very strong guy, okay? Recently, I started to work out a little bit more, but I'm still, you know, not that strong, all right? So now, as soon as I grab, Chris is gonna pull out, boom. And it's very annoying to deal with. So what I do is like this, so put the hand back. What I do is I'm gonna get up on this elbow, like this. When I get up on this elbow, look how close my hand is to Chris's wrist. However, this is an illusion because although Chris doesn't feel my hand here, it's there ready to attack. So Chris is not gonna pull his arm away. It's gonna give me a chance now, guys, to take this hand and loop it all the way through. Now that it's here, I can grab Chris's wrist and grab my wrist. The beautiful part of the, the, uh, the situation here, guys, if Chris pulls away now, boom, I can finish with the Kimura. So the principle is to do the Kimura backwards. In fact, if you're doing the Kimura from the closed guard, instead of grabbing the wrist and sitting up and getting your own wrist, I suggest to go for the hip bump sweep and then going for the Kimura. This, in my opinion, is a much more effective way, especially if you're not that strong. If you have a, a monster grip, you don't have nothing to worry about. But if you're, you know, like me, like some other guys that don't have such a, such a strong grip, you wanna do it backwards, okay? So just so you understand what I'm talking about, we're gonna do it from here, close guard. You know, Chris's hands are on the floor. If I grab it, everybody pulls away, boom. So what I like to do is I sit up and now I go here. The hand right here is ready to, to grab it at any moment. So if Chris now tries to pull it out, look what I do. I just guide it right behind his back, okay? But usually it's gonna be impossible for Chris to pull this arm out. So now I have two options. I can go for my hip bump sweep or you go for your Kimura attack, okay? With that said, let's go for the Jiro into the Kimura backwards okay so i'm gonna be here now guys that are very strong okay just like the guy that fought van rick Juan, they they're gonna hug you they're gonna double leg you from the top so as soon as you start to go they start to kind of hug you here so look what you're gonna do guys you're gonna take this hand and you're gonna overhook chris's elbow now when you fall chris is right into the kimura position here from here guys what i like to do is i like to make a small hip escape put in my butterfly hook now i can take this hook off and even if Chris grabs something here, which he usually does, now I push him and get into here. And then from here, you can start to work, break it, arm bar, or taking the back. So you have a lot of options, okay? You can, from the Kimura, you can arm bar, take the back, 
Okay, you can turn it into a triangle. There's so many different positions from it. I know there's some guys that did, uh, put out DVDs on it. Amazing DVDs, guys. You can definitely check them out and learn a lot. Okay, but this DVD is not on the Kimura, but I hope the principles um, stick with you too. So again, when I do the Jiro, I'm not gonna fall and grab the wrist. I'm gonna stay planted on my arm, and I'm gonna hook it with my, my, with my arm that's closest to his body, my left arm. I grab his wrist, grab my own wrist, and I go, okay? Finish here, perpendicular to him, or put in this hook, throw him over. And then from here, you can do a lot of things, guys. Doesn't matter what you do. You can come on top, you can do a lot of things, okay? Again. Okay, so I really love this guy because as soon as he's expecting a sweep, he hugs you, thinking that he's gonna bring you back to the floor, thinking that he's gonna squash you and then pass your guard. Little does he know, he left his hand in the cookie jar for too long. Boom, he gets caught with the Kimura lock. Very, very, very strong submission, guys. Thank you very much. Okay, guys, so the, the claim to fame with the G-roll is actually not from one of my tournament wins. It's actually from one of Van Allen Flores' tournament wins. So, the story goes like this, Van entered a tournament at Boston Open and uh, one of his first opponents was a gentleman named Rick Hahn and I didn't really re recognize him, neither did Van and Van actually starts the match with like kind of grip fighting with him and he didn't realize that this is an Olympian in Judo and he, does, he didn't realize this was a Bellator fighter either. We only realized that afterwards. So when Van was doing the Giro on him, Rick Hahn is so strong, he just started to crush him and also Van was fighting up a weight class so Rick Hahn was even bigger than expected. Okay, so as soon as he started to hug, Van, um, being pretty strong too, he balanced himself on one arm and then he finished him with a triangle choke, okay? Um, this this uh, position, I've never done myself, all right? Uh, because I do so many so many of the other positions, but it's such, such a nice position and um, we're lucky enough to have Van uh, demonstrate it today, okay? So enjoy it, guys, thank you. All right, guys, so <clears throat> first I start off in the Jiro position. Again, of course, always cross your feet, squeeze your knees. And as I was going for it, I did the same exact, the basic, most basic drill, which I love. That's the one that I like. I started doing a push up. He starts doing what Chris is doing right now. He's starting to hug me, uh, holding my gi like this. So, what I did was I turned into him and I grabbed his neck like so. As I do this, I shoot my left knee, which is on his hip, inside here. As I throw my bottom leg right here by his neck. So, from here, I fall, boom. How this works is you can finish it really well because you can't posture as you're trying to to uh, maybe set up the G-roll to the triangle, okay? So again, from this angle. So, from here, leg locks, squeeze your knees. Again, blocking the arm, moving back, doing my push-up, and he starts pressuring me here. So, I keep, I steady myself on one hand and I hold his neck. Okay, he doesn't know it's coming yet. So, I start kicking my left leg back, and I throw my right leg over. So, I start falling, straight to here, lift, and traditional finish, okay? Last point, here. Here, do the basic expression. I keep myself up on one hand, maybe if you're on your knee, or it's okay as well, okay? But you have to be on this one and straighten your arm. Lock his neck, keep him down, shoot your right leg up, and your left leg through. Here, definitely finish, okay? Here's Alex. So guys, uh, this position, um, you can actually, I'm gonna post a link that you're gonna see on the bottom, all right, and uh, this this video, the funny thing about the video is somebody made on YouTube a video, it says Rick Hahn, uh, uh, Jiu Jitsu Fight, and they don't even mention Van, so it's in the title, it's, uh, it only says him, and I, I was lucky enough to find it, and uh, you, you can watch what happened there. Rick Hahn was actually so strong, he picked Van up, and then Van was able to finish the triangle later. And just a, a disclaimer, I have nothing but respect for Rick Hahn. He's, I've, I've watched his Bellator fights, I, I love his grappling, he's such an amazing fighter. Um, it, just, it just so happened that Van faced him in, in, in a match, and um, he, was, uh, he used this position, okay? Uh, thank you very much, guys. 
So guys, um, the video that you just saw with Van Allen Flores doing the G-roll to the triangle, it was, it was I believe in either 2012 or early 2013. And uh, after I saw it, I was actually inspired. And I was like, wow, there, if you can do a triangle from G-roll, you can do other things too. So um, there's some guys that um, their legs are maybe a little bit shorter, uh, maybe they don't like triangles that much, but they love omoplata. So I, I, I developed a way from the G-roll to get into the omoplata. All right, and the concept is very, very similar. And again, in jujitsu, you know, a lot of people, they like to, you know, overcomplicate things. What I'm trying to do is simplify everything for you guys, okay? Uh, it's, you, there's these tiny little details and that's all you need for success, okay? You don't have time to think during a fight. If you start to think too much, where does this grip go? Where does my pinky go? Where do I put, what is the angle of my knee? You're gonna get you're gonna get swept. You're gonna get submitted really quickly. You have to be on autopilot, okay? So just stick to the basic principles, and that's what's most important. So now I'm gonna be here, okay, and I'm gonna do the same exact move. Okay, start to go, and now Chris starts to hug me. So this hand is gonna stay on the floor. This hand, instead of going for the head, okay, I'm gonna go for the back of his tricep. Now as I fall, I'm gonna fall and go for my omoplata. As soon as I go for the omoplata, you can do a lot of things from here, guys. Hug his waist fix my legs, sit up, you know, I can start to go for his, oops, that's a blooper there guys, and don't worry, this is unedited, this is going to be in the video, all right, I can start to go for his back, whatever, all right, so, um, the g to the Plata, I started to develop a little bit more, because I don't really do too many triangles, okay, my legs are, you know, I don't know, I feel a little bit weird with it, but on Plata, I love it so much, so I started to do it a lot, okay, let's do a couple more angles, Grab the tricep, as I fall, go for the omoplata. Here, you know, you have an arm lock you can do here. Doesn't matter what you do there, guys. The point is to get into the omoplata from the bottom of half guard position, okay? Okay, with that said guys, this is not a normal DVD, okay? Um, rules are good, but I don't really like them that much, okay? I'm not an anarchist, but uh, I like to have fun, a little play around a little bit. So, this DVD is different from any others, you know? We're not gonna have any crazy editing. My, my, my goal, guys, is not to sell you an okay car with a beautiful paint job, okay? I wanna sell you the best car, you know? Actually, for free, I'm not even selling it. All right, but again, if you wanna donate, you know, you can feel free. I'll put my, my PayPal address in the bottom, okay? Thank you very much, guys. Okay guys, so my most effective move in competition and probably my highest percent percentage move is gonna be this one. So I'm gonna show you all the all the secrets, all the stuff uh, that went behind it, okay? And again, if, you're, if you think I'm crazy for doing this, this is just to better myself as a martial artist. I'm not a black belt, all right? I don't know anything, and when I do get my black belt, I'm, I'm still gonna be learning too. So this is gonna take me out of my comfort zone, all right, because if everybody's gonna know my best moves, I gotta learn new ones, right? I gotta be more innovative and stuff like that. And to be honest, I've been you know a little bit comfortable with the G-roll over the past two years, so no problem, guys. I'm gonna show everything, and it's gonna be better for me and better for you, so it's a win-win situation, uh, the best kind, okay? So this move, um, it works extremely well because the guy is worried about getting swept, and then you hit him with a toe hold, okay? And don't worry, guys, if you're, if you're not a brown belt, not a black belt, or you don't compete in no-gi divisions that allow you toe holds, um, we're gonna have some other variations uh, for you later, okay? Uh, but if you're a high-level grappler, brown, black, and you compete in the expert divisions in some of these no-gi tournaments where you can do toe holds, this is gonna be a really nice move for you guys, okay? So we're gonna start with the same exact thing, okay? We're gonna start in the half guard, my ankles are crossed, feet are squeezed, and everything remains the same, guys, all right? Now I'm gonna stretch my body back, all right, and I'm gonna go for the G-roll. Now, as soon as I make a zero, look what happens. I catch this ankle right on my chest. I grab the toes, I go over, and I go for the toe hold. Now, the reason, guys, this is so powerful is because his, his leg is bent. The toe hold works the best when your opponent's leg is bent. It's, 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 not, power, it's not that powerful if his leg is straight, all right, to finish the toe hold. So as soon as I'm here, all I have to do is press a little bit, and he taps, all right? Notice, guys, this leg, I'm controlling. I'm crossing, okay? So he cannot use this leg to defend. And if he tries to move away, I follow. And I can just press a little bit and, sn and it snaps, okay? My forward pressure is very, very strong, all right? He cannot kick away, all right? Because I'm so close to his body. And because I'm on his back, he doesn't even see what I'm doing, all right? So I finished, uh, I'm not really sure how many matches, but quite a few matches with just this move. And some matches, 
Um, uh, I finish quite quick with this. I just go straight for this, straight into the toehold, and nobody ever really expects it uh, because it's again they're go they're thinking I'm sweeping them, and then boom, they get their foot caught. Okay, so here. Boom. So watch guys how his foot is gonna land right on my stomach, okay? Watch his bottom foot. As I roll, watch this foot, boom. It lands right here. So instead of coming up, instead of going to his back turtle like we did before, which is great, which is really, really nice, you can go for the toe hold too. So you grab the toes, over, and grab. And here, all you do is you turn your wrist a little bit, okay, making sure his foot is bent in this way, and he's gonna tap immediately. Some guys from here, they start to roll too. You know, they start to move. So Chris, if he moves, I follow, and then I just finish from here. I can, I can throw my leg over, and then start to finish in this situation here, guys. So if you are proficient with the toe hold, um, your body is naturally gonna put itself into the situation that it needs to finish it. Because once you get the grip, he's already at a defensive situation. So you're, in the, you're the offender, and you're gonna be able to, to, to complete the position, okay? So again, this is my probably my best move. And um, it's worked really, really well, guys. And again, um, as soon as they get it, it's, it's pretty hard to defend, all right? Unless the guy has a really flexible foot or time runs out, this is pretty, pretty effective, okay? Thank you very much, guys. Okay, guys, so it's no secret that um, there's so many innovators in Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. Um, two uh, famous brothers that come to mind are uh, the Mendes brothers, um, as well as uh, the Miao brothers, okay? Um, and then along with Samuel Braga and uh, some other guys are really, really good with the Baron Bolo. Um, and it's, uh, as soon as I saw it, I fell in love with it. I thought, wow, this is such a great position. You go, you know, from, from this kind of open guard, you kick the guy back and then you go to his back, unbelievable. And I used to, I used to watch Eddie Bravo do it from the top, you know, that's, you know in, my, in my opinion, the twister roll and the Baron Bolo, pretty much the same exact thing, just from different positions. You know, you can do it from the top side control, from the top half guard. Um, from the turtle position, you can roll through. So I started to do it actually from the G roll too, because a lot of times the guy to defend it, he defends it like he's defending the uh, Baron Bolo. So the wrong, in my opinion, the wrong way to defend the Baron Bolo is to sit on your butt, you know, because then the guy can take your back. But some people, they do this from the G roll too. So when Chris sits on his butt, butt and opens his leg, I can go to the, uh, to the Baron Bolo, okay? So let's give a look, guys. So I'm here. Okay, I'm gonna go for my, my G roll. Chris sits and then he opens up his leg here. So look guys, look where my hook is. My hook is already in the right place. So take your hand, go ahead and grab the belt, and now spin. Take his back for the bare bowl. Okay, your legs automatically come into like a Delahiva hook when he sits down on his butt. That way you can go straight into the bare bowl, okay? Here, grab it, and even if he's not sitting, guys, the principles remain the same. Take your foot, kick him down so he sits, invert this leg across his stomach. Now, pull his pants, grab, pull to finish the back take. And again, guys, if you uh, play with the Baron Bolo, instant addition to your game. So the Baron Bolo, a lot of guys, what they do is they use spider guard. So they all balance you with spider guard. And as soon as you're getting swept, you open your leg. They put a Delahiva hook in, they make you sit down, and they take your back. But if you like half guard, or if you find yourself in the bottom of half guard, where your opponent both knees on the ground, and, you, and he's tight, and he can't go for the spider, you can do the G-roll just to set up the Baron Bolo. So in my opinion, if you become an expert of a position such as the Baron Bolo, um, you need to be able to do it from any situation, guys. So this is gonna be a new addition uh, to your game, all right? Thank you. Okay, guys, so the next position is gonna be uh, the G-roll to the knee bar, okay? So knee bar is, is a really, really strong move that in my opinion is a little bit underrated in uh, Brazilian Jiu-Jitsu. So 
Um, there's some Sambo guys that are really, really strong with this position, and they surprised you know some grapplers with this and like local grapplers quest and stuff like that that, that I've seen. So in my opinion, it's underrated, and um, <clears throat> the reason is there's not that many setups for it, right? So you can set it up from the top of half guard, um, sometimes from the bottom of open guard when the guy stands up, you go for it and stuff like that. Um, but you can actually do it from the G roll too. So the more variations for a certain position, the better. So let's look at how I'm going to do this from uh, the G roll, okay? So I'm gonna be here, all right? So as soon as I go for my G roll, feet crossed, boom, I'm gonna attack that leg of Chris. So as soon as I roll, what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this foot and I'm gonna overhook Chris's leg. As soon as I do that, I'm gonna take this arm and I'm gonna swim it under my armpit. My bottom leg comes out and I'm at a very tight knee bar. So guys, the traditional knee bar is like this. What I did is I put it here, all right, boom. So when you put it under your armpit, it makes it tighter. The knee bar, uh, when I was a white belt, I, I asked my teacher, I, I, was like, I was like, hey, is the knee bar the same as an arm bar except you're attacking the knee? And he was like, yeah. I was like, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. So yeah, it's actually the same exact thing. So, you know, if, if I have Chris on the arm bar, it's very powerful to do an arm bar regular like this, but if you put your armpit over it, it makes it even much more powerful. Even Chris's uh, elbow popped a little bit just now. Not anything serious, just a little, a little crack. You know to further justify this all right because here it's so it's so deep all right so let's we're gonna let's look at this again so when we're here here so when script falls this leg goes over this arm goes under and now i take my bottom hook out as soon as i'm here i have to squeeze my knees together just like in the arm bar pinch and go up so I like this way a lot, but this way, in my opinion, is much tighter. It's hard, and if Chris starts to move, you know, I just follow him, and then boom, I crank it in here. All right, it's very, very tight. <clears throat> boom, hips up. Okay, guys, so if you like knee bars, boom, you got a new option from the G-Roll, all right? So my, again, my goal is to give you existing grapplers new ways to do things that you're already good at, okay? So I'm not gonna show you exactly how to finish the, the knee bar and stuff like that. If you know it, you know it, all right? But the important thing is to find a new setup because the more new ways that you can find the position that you already like, the more of, an, of a dangerous grappler you're gonna become, all right? Thank you very much, guys. Okay guys, so um, as soon as I started to, to learn more about passing the guard, um, which is such an important thing in Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, um, I, I started to do more leg drags and stuff like that. So uh, later I figured out, you know, as soon as I did the first G, I would land on the top of the guy's half guard. Now I was like, oh man, I gotta pass the guy's guard, which is okay, but uh, you know, it can be a little bit annoying if he G rolls you back, all right? So what I started to do is, I, in the transition, before he falls back, I would do a, a leg drag on him, you know, to finish. So it's a very, very simple, um, but it changed everything for me because I landed right on the top side control, ready to attack or take his back and, you know, go for all my stuff, all right? So you can do the G-roll straight into the side control in this way, okay? So it's gonna be the very first position, all right? So I'm gonna go for the first position. Here I go, and now Chris falls over. Right here, guys, okay? Instead of just coming onto my knees, I'm gonna take this hand, I'm gonna dive it and I'm gonna clear my hook, all right? My leg that's inside, Chris, turn around, please. As, as soon as it was here, I cleared it too. So I clear it, and boom, you come in into the leg drag position. So here, dive under that leg, and now your leg, you're gonna clear it. So you don't get caught in the 50-50. And boom, and then Chris is back. Okay, so again guys, the Giro, I've been doing it for, I believe ever since um, like early 2009 or maybe late 2008, 
Um, so we, I've been doing it for quite some time. So I started to really develop new things from the old things. You know, the old things are great and they work really, really well. But some, I started to develop new little tricks from them. All right. And guess what? The first thing works really amazing too. But, you know, if you like the leg drag, bam, you can land right into it from the original G. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys. So the next position we're going to uh, see it's a little bit of an old school position. It used to be popular a couple years ago. It's still pretty popular today. And it's the deep half guard. So the deep half guard, uh, I like it a lot. Uh, there's some people that, uh, such as uh, the Mendez brothers, they say they don't like it too much to use it in their own games. Um, but uh, I, I think it's, it's pretty strong. Um, Bernardo Faria is, is really good at it. You know, he, he sweeps a lot of people. You just can't get crushed there. You got to watch out for the Kimura. So there's a few things there that are going on. But, you know, if you really like it, you can do the G roll to the, to the deep half. Um, so this actually was um, Sergio De Silva's. A uh, little creation. So he he told me that he loves the deep half so much, and he would always shoot in for the deep half when the person kind of pressures forward into you. Okay. And again, the deep half. I don't suggest just to hang around there and stay there all day. Yeah, you can get choked and stuff like that. But it's just like any other position. You know, it has its pluses and minuses. But if you like it already, let's give it a try. Okay. So we're gonna start again from the same exact exact jivo. You know here. So we're gonna we're gonna start with the feet crossed. All right. And as soon as I go, notice how Chris is gonna try to put my back flat on the mat, all right? And he's gonna try to angle himself into me. So as soon as I go, you know, he's gonna go like this. So what I'm gonna do is, I'm gonna take this hand, I'm gonna start to fish from my underhook. As soon as I do that, I'm gonna dive my right hand right in between Chris's legs, like this. Boom. As soon as I'm here, guys, I suggest taking this hand, hiding it right away, okay? And then you can do a lot of variation, you know, to open up, to go into the X door and to go into a lot of different positions. So I love the deep half, like not staying there, but you know, going into other things, you know, such as the X guard, 50-50, single leg X, you can go a lot of different things from there. All right, so as soon as you fall in, I suggest hiding that arm, just so you, you don't get caught with Kimura or underhook, which was, is gonna kill the deep half guard, okay? So let's turn. Okay, so we're here, we're gonna go, so, this hand swims in here, this hand swims in there, so like this. Boom. Now this hand, right away, I like to hide. If you can start to take out Chris's lapel, doesn't matter which one, either or. Now, you can start to go, kick, create space, here. 50-50. Here, put this knee back on. Single leg X, you know, foot lock if you like it, whatever. You know, that's what I like to do from the deep half. All right, I'll do one more version. Here. All right, so there's a lot of really, really nice variations from the deep half guard, um, but you can really set it up nicely when you start with the G roll. Because a lot of times the guy's gonna try to press you forward, and it's a very smart thing for him to do, to put your back flat on the mat, and to try to <clears throat> turn your hips down. So you can just shoot in straight for the deep half. All right, thank you guys. Okay guys, so one position that we just saw from the deep half guard is the 50-50, and uh, I think it's an amazing position. Um, some people say that you stole in there and stuff like that, um, which it, it, it can be like, it, it can definitely be like that, but you can also have a lot of different options from there. Um, so a lot of times what I see in tournaments happen is um, as soon as somebody sweeps from the 50-50, they hug the guy and they stay on the top and they're really tight and there's 30 seconds left and the guy in the bottom struggles to sweep back. Um, but you can actually G-roll from the 50-50 and uh, it, it puts a lot of pressure on the guy's hip and it, it pretty much forces him to fall down and either he gives up his back, he gives up the sweep, or you can also leg lock him from there too. Okay, so let's say I'm on the bottom, okay, and Chris puts his leg. So first of all, guys, for the 50-50, um, I want Chris's leg across my body, okay? I don't want his leg on the same side because if it's on the same side, Chris can leg drag me, you know? So as soon as Chris's leg is here, bring your hips up, drag this across. Anybody that's good with the 50-50, I'm sure you guys know a lot of different people, they always do this, they put it across on the side. So now, notice where my knees are pointed. My knees are both pointed up. For the G-roll, what I actually want is my knees to point down. So what I'm gonna do is, all right, I'm gonna take this knee and I'm gonna shift it down 
to be almost parallel with Chris's other knee. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna cross my ankles and I'm gonna make my, my legs uh, uh, really tight here. So it's, it looks almost like a half guard that I have on Chris's leg here, okay? And a lot of times Chris is gonna be, you know, putting his weight on me, pressuring me. And now guys, I'm gonna turn around and I'm gonna do my G roll. And notice where I end up. You know, this is, you can bear a ball off of here or you can start to take this hook out, drag this across and coming on top of the leg drag, okay? Or you can bear and bowl, you can do a lot of things from there, guys. Again, um, I'm trying to give you guys new variations and new ideas. Um, these things, th there's already instructionals for them um, that, they, that are gonna be much better than, my, than, than I can describe. So, you know, take a look at, uh, at uh, different finishes for the bear and bowl, for the leg drags, all that stuff. This is just new setups for them that, in my opinion, not a lot of people have seen uh, yet, okay? So, we're here. We're in the 50-50, so this is a conventional 50-50. So I'm gonna grab the pants, you know, I'm fighting here, I'm doing stuff like this, whatever, here. So now I'm gonna angle my knee to go down, like this. As soon as I angle my knee, I'm gonna cross my legs, okay? So now I keep a nice tight pressure, all right? If Chris starts to scoot away, I can grab onto his leg here, so, so it's hard for him to scoot. But even if he starts to scoot, starts to scoot Chris, boom, you giro. Here, I can start to come up, all right? I have some leg locks here, okay? Or you can start to come to his back and to do the uh, leg drives and back takes, all right? Okay, so this is just one simple, simple variation of back tape that if you've been playing around with these positions for a while, it's bread and butter to you, all right? But from the 50-50, when, when you angle your legs down, it puts a tremendous amount of pressure on his knee and on his, on his hip, all right? So that when you start to turn, it buckles him and he's forced to fall, all right? And we're gonna see some other things from, from this situation later uh, if he grabs you and stuff like that, okay? Thank you guys. All right guys, so um, every time I started to do the G-roll from the 50-50, uh, what people started to do is they would start to open up their knee, they would use their, especially people that are a little bit flexible, and then they would crush me. So there's some guys that I roll with that are they're not only bigger than me, they're also pretty flexible, so they would start to crush me. And in that position, you actually feel your knee a lot and it feels kind of uncomfortable. So I, I, I'm gonna show you guys a move that you can do. Um, it's, an arm, it's an arm lock. Uh, on the person as, as soon as he does that. And uh, it works really, really well because from the 50-50, everybody's really focused on the leg locks. They're focused on the ankle locks, on the toe holds, you know, the knee bars and all that stuff. And a lot of times they forget about the, the, that there's a lot of arm locks uh, available there too. Uh, well, we know one that uh, Keenan does that's really nice. He throws a leg over and he, he gets the arm bar. But this is actually even simpler. Um, and uh, you, 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 it's really kind of sneaky too. All right, so I think you guys are gonna enjoy it. So sometimes when I'm in this position, for the 50-50 here. What Chris, as soon as I start to go here, Chris takes this knee, he puts it on the floor, and now he hugs me, you know? And then here, I'm kind of squashed. I can't really go anywhere. So as soon as he does this, I'm gonna take my hand, I'm gonna frame on his face, and I'm gonna push him back a little bit. I need his wrist to go right between my ear and my shoulder. As soon as his wrist is between my ear and my shoulder, I'm gonna pretend as if I'm playing a violin, guys, okay? Nobody plays violin like this. They play violin like this. So I'm gonna really squeeze here. Now I'm gonna make a fist, all right? I'm gonna grab my own fist like this. I can make a gable grip, whatever grip you're comfortable. Some people even take two palms down like this. And I'm gonna turn Chris's elbow down and boom, I'm gonna snap it for a quick submission, okay? So here, again, he was hugging me. I push his face away and boom, right here. And what I love about this guy is everybody always tries to pull out. So now I'm gonna do the Kimura just like we talked about earlier, we're gonna do the Kimura backwards. So from the, from the arm lock, if me and Chris turn, as soon as I'm doing the arm lock, Chris starts to turn, this hand comes over, I grab the wrist, I grab my own wrist. And now I finish Chris here. And a lot of times Chris is gonna give up the sweep and I'm just gonna follow him and I can start finishing him from here. My leg looks like it's caught in here, all right? But I have his arm under attack, all right? As long as your knee feels okay, you can stay here. If, you feel, if your knee feels uncomfortable, what you can do is, you can feed Chris's gi over his wrist, judo style like this, 
And now you can start to take your leg out and then pass to the side, all right? So one more time. We're in the 50-50, all right? This especially, guys, a little bigger than you, flexible knee and they can crush you. So he opens and he starts to go, boom. A lot of times, guys, I catch it before he yells me. All right, so I just catch it straight from here. And if not, again, I turn him into a kimura. But if Chris hugs me, here, I'm gonna take this hand, I'm gonna place it on his face, I'm gonna start to frame him away. Now, this hand is gonna go dig right here, make my ear touch my shoulder, and here, I finish him with a very quick arm lock. And if he starts to pull away, then I go for my first move here. So when he starts to escape and pull away, I have an opportunity to go for my first position here. So I really enjoy this. Um, and it, I've been catching quite a few people with it just because you know they kind of you know forget that uh, their arms can be under attack in this situation too. You know they're always worried so much about their legs, and the arms are there right there also. All right, so. In this instance, the guy's really tied up. He can't really twist and turn anywhere because you really lock his legs when you do the G-roll type of 50-50. All right, thank you very much, guys. Okay, guys, so one person that I always looked up to in my training uh, who actually took me under his wing and mentored me for the first few years of my jiu-jitsu career uh, was a guy by the name of Marshall Gelman. So he's sitting behind me to my right. Um, so Marshall, um, he was a blue belt and I was a white belt. He was always uh, ahead of me and he would always sh be showing me things. He would be linking me to things to watch on YouTube. He would always be uh, trying to t tell me about new positions that he's playing around with. And I would always look up to him in that sense. And what happened was me and him, uh, we traveled, we took seminars together, we trained everywhere together. Uh, we were always, you know, side by side. Uh, we were kind of like the Jewish Meow brothers. And then what happened was um, he decided to pursue his career in medicine. So um, me and him, we both joined Shalins Academy and we were training, you know, twice a day, almost every day. Um, and uh, then he decided he's gonna, you know, pursue uh, a, a little bit of a different route, but he never stopped training. He was still training every day. He's training for uh, pretty much almost 10 years already, if not 10 years. And uh, so he was there for the G-roll uh, from the beginning until, up until where it is right now. And the interesting thing is, um, as soon as he saw it, he right away, he started to kind of brainstorm and he created a really, really nice uh, position off of it. And the, really, the, re the reason I really like it is because um, you don't have to cross your ankles for this position, guys. Um, plus, uh, right now it's uh, June of 2014 and a, a very, very famous uh, uh, position right now is the worm guard. So that's what everybody's doing. Everybody's doing the worm guard and everybody's trying to um, take out the lapels and pass with the lapels. Um, but you know, we've been doing that for a while, not in the same way as the worm guard, but in a similar way. And by the way, I love the worm guard too, um, but this is uh, just a little bit simpler even. You know, you don't have to pass it uh, all the way through and you just trap the guy's arm and you're gonna go. So uh, without further ado, uh, Dr. Marshall Gelman, he, he just got his uh, doctorate finally, uh, he's gonna do the next position, okay? Thank you guys. I guess so I'm starting without my uh, ankles crossed so I'm not in as deep this gives me a little bit more ability to move here this is just how I like to play the half guard um, for this variation I'm going to take out his lapel now there's a lot of things guys do they feed it under the leg they feed it to different places for this one I'm going to trap his arm here now what usually what Chris is going to try to do is to try to pull back and yeah and by doing that he leans back a little bit I'm going to chase him as he does that so I trap the arm here, as he pulls back here, push up, grab the leg, and come top. Again, starting here, feet are just crossed at the uh, toes. Take the lapel out over the arm, trap his arm. As he goes to pull out the arm, he chase. Toes cross, take out the lapel, trap the arm, come up, and pull, chase, come up. Thanks. Okay guys, so this is an amazing variation and Marshall's been hitting it a lot. Um, he does both variations. He does the original G-Roll too, um, but he does this a lot too. Marshall, he loves to like uh, have fun with Jiu-Jitsu, you know, he plays around a lot. Uh, his favorite rapper is actually uh, Ricardo Vieira, so he's always inspired by him and he's always coming up with new things. And uh, he's doing this a little bit slow, but believe me guys, when he does this real speed, it's really fast and knocks the guy over right away. And even if the guy takes his arm out, his base is still back, so he's, you can still trip him. 
Okay, uh, so thank you very much to Dr. Dr. Marshall Gelman for this variation, and uh, let's see what's next. Thank you, guys. Okay, guys, so the next variation is from a little bit of a controversial position. So the position is the double guard pull. So um, the double guard pull, it's, uh, it's very effective, so it's very hard to deal with. And uh, double guard pull happens when two grapplers uh, believe in their guard so much that they both want to always pull on each other. And uh, again, I want to show you guys a new uh, variation and a new, a new idea that you can do from the double guard pull. Um, and you can go to the barambolo, you can go to the back, to leg locks, you can do a lot of things from there. Uh, the important thing about the double guard pull, guys, is with the new rules in jiu-jitsu, the current rules is, you know, if you know action happens in 20 seconds, you get stood up, and then you keep getting penalties, and then, in fact, you can get disqualified if you, if you get uh, a few. Um, so you want to have a lot of action, okay? So again, the more variations for you guys, the better. So this is a really nice one, okay? So me and Chris, we, we go into the double guard pull, okay? So the first thing that you want to do here, guys, is um, the, all the people in the crowd that are yelling at you, you want, don't listen to them, okay? I'm just, I'm just joking, guys. So the first thing you wanna do is you wanna cross your feet, right, as if it's a half guard position here, guys. So um, instead of just being like, a lot of people, they play like De La Hiva, reverse De La Hiva, et cetera. You wanna make this hook one, and then here, you lie and you cross your feet. Now, it depends. If you wanna go for the leg lock, you're gonna roll over Chris's uh, foot. If you wanna go for the back, you roll under. So we'll see both. So if Chris's legs are wide, I'm gonna make a roll here, and then from here, I can grab. And Barambolo, okay? Or, I can just, boom. Come on top for some simple back takes, okay? If you wanna go for leg locks, okay? As soon as we're here, I'm gonna roll over the top of Chris's leg. So I'm gonna roll here and strap his leg here. So hold, knee bar, or, you know, you can start going for some ankle locks and so on and so forth, okay? There's a lot of, a lot of leg lock positions here, okay? Again. Uh, here, so I'm gonna pull, boom, I come into here. Now I'm gonna roll over here. I roll over this, and notice guys, when I cross my legs, this leg here is under my control. And now, boom, one, two, and if you want, I can start going to the leg drag and all of its variations. Okay, so the double guard, again, you don't wanna be static there. All right, 20 seconds is a very short time. Um, you're gonna get st stood up fast. In fact, that happens to me. You know, it happened to me in the past worlds too. You know, I kept getting stood up and stuff. Um, so you wanna start attacking right away. Um, one strategy that you can use is as soon as you get there, you can go for a leg lock right away. The reason is, um, if you have a leg lock, they're not gonna stand you up because you're actually doing something, okay? But if you're only going for bare and bolo and nothing happens in 20 seconds, they're gonna stand you up. So if 20 seconds is coming, you wanna roll over. If you want to be taking the back that just started, you can roll under, okay? So it really doesn't make that much of a difference because it's a win-win situation. Either way, you're going to get something. And you're not really in too much danger besides it's all hold, but yours will be stronger, okay, because you're controlling his leg with your legs, all right? Uh, thank you very much, guys. <clears throat> okay, guys, so one very, very strong way to pass the guard is uh, with an, uh, a knee slice uh, guard pass. So a lot of really top-level guys uh, really prefer this way of passing. So when I started to do the G-roll, people wouldn't try to be stiff and, and, and low anymore. A lot of guys take a different approach. A lot of guys, they try to knee slice through it. And it, it, it's very, very effective, okay? So I started to do what I call the belly flop G-roll. So I'm actually just gonna flop on my belly. I'm not even gonna do a push-up anymore. And I'm gonna rotate 360 degrees and I'm gonna use that stand up on the top, all right? And later on, I'm gonna show you guys a couple of leg locks from there too uh, that I believe are, are, are not used uh, at all, okay? So let's go over it really quickly. So as soon as I'm here, guys, I'm in a half guard, all right? So Chris, you know, instead of being on his knees, he puts this through. So the rules remain the same, guys. What I wanna do is, I wanna cross my ankles, all right? If you have long legs, you can even go and triangle your legs here, like this, okay? That's pretty good too. All right, actually even better. All right, so as soon as I'm here, now, you know, even if Chris starts to hold me, I'm gonna start to turn my body away, and look what I'm gonna do, guys. I'm gonna just barrel roll and belly flop. 
Usually, Chris doesn't want to stay here. So he's going to start to kick this leg. You want to catch it and then start to come on the top position here. All right. So while you catch the leg, this prevents Chris from standing up. And because he can't stand up, he can't stay on the top. So it forces him to sit down and I beat him to the punch. So I sit, I, I sit up with him. All right. Again. Boom. And then I go for my own knee in the middle and then I can pass whichever ways, okay? Again. Here, notice guys, here, if you can triangle, triangle. But make sure you do not lose your top knee. Your top knee has to stay in front of Chris. You cannot do it from here. Here, Chris is gonna pass. So I need to be in front of his hip. So if he tries to pressure into me, this is in his way, okay? Be careful, guys, that he doesn't take his hand and he goes like this. If he does that, you can start to sit up and go for arm drags, okay? So he's here. Now I'm gonna belly flop away and I turn. At this moment, I trap the leg. Guys, if you can pass it on the outside while you're sitting up, this is even better. You get to, you, get, you land in the leg drag. But it doesn't always happen because Sometimes the guy kicks his leg off over like a huge windmill and it's hard to kind of see where his leg is. All right, but as long as you cast that leg, when you come on the top, you turn it into almost like an ankle pick, kind of, sort of, because you're grabbing the pants. And uh, as soon as you sit up, boom, easy two points. All right, so a lot of people think that by driving the knee through, they actually pass the g -roll. Um But they can if they do everything perfect, but usually that's never the case. So usually you can take advantage of their mistake by being too greedy and then you can belly flop and get on the top position. All right, thank you guys. Okay guys, so uh, the next position is gonna be this, what we just saw, it's gonna be the belly flop G-roll when the person tries to bring their knee through, um, except we're gonna finish uh, with a little bit of a twist on the traditional ankle lock, and this is 100% uh, IBJJF legal, and uh, if you don't play by IBJJF rules, you're automatically gonna see heel hooks and other submissions that you can get there too. Um, and uh, Marshall uh, is amazing at leg locks, and I wanted him to demonstrate it, because he has a few pointers, guys, that are, are, are gonna be really nice for you um, to finish the ankle lock, okay? Um, so he's gonna take over, okay? Thank you, guys. Okay, so I'm gonna start with the belly flop G-roll. As we come over, I'm gonna catch this foot, pass it under the opposite armpit, right? To get this, uh, the right pressure on his leg, I wanna grab here and turn his knee out a little bit. From here, I'm gonna come up on my, uh, up on my hand or up on my forearm, and I'm gonna bridge over this shoulder. Now, it's important, a lot of guys try to grab this, and they also they get the grip a little bit late, and they're cranking at the calf here, and you, it's, it's very hard to finish on most people. What you wanna do is to make sure that your wrist and the, uh, the sharp bone right here comes as close as you can to his heel. So I wanna slide here. Here. Now I'm gonna look up and over the shoulder and bridge. And you can get a pretty fast tap from here. Or if you have to, you can turn it around onto the side. Here, bye. Or over this way works as well. Okay, guys, so this was a, a very, very uh, effective ankle lock uh, that, that uh, Marshall is really, really good at. And uh, one thing, if you notice, guys, because you're crossing your ankles over the G-roll, um, uh, Chris cannot use his leg to cross his feet. He cannot use his free leg to kick or anything. His leg is trapped, and his other leg is open and vulnerable for the attacks. And also notice, Marshall, um, he fell to the same side as the leg that he's attacking. This is for IBGGF, so you don't get disqualified. But it's even more powerful if you fall to the opposite side because then you're going to be leaning on the same side as the leg and that way you can get a better crank. So uh, if you're not into IBJJF rules, which is fine, uh, check out the variation if Marshall stays on the same side. It's going to be even, you're going to see what's going to happen to the knee, okay, really quickly.
Okay, thank you guys. So again, there's many different roles and many different ideas and uh, you can you can use this in, in, in different role sets, you know, not just IBJJF, you know. If you compete where uh, these rules are not applied by, it's even stronger. You can even get a, 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 a little crank on the knee because the knee is now in, in, um, in a bent shape, okay? And uh, there's, no, there's, there's nothing to protect the knee because um, his other leg is, is, is being blocked, okay? Thank you guys very much. Okay guys, so from the belly flop duo, uh, you can surprise him with a toe hold on the same side leg that you're trapping in between your legs. So pretty much all the leg locks and uh, toe holds from the bottom of half guard and bottom uh, of this position come when I attack Chris's opposite leg, his far leg. You know, you underhook and you go for knee bar, for toe holds, even just like we did, you know, very recently, okay? Um, but now I'm gonna surprise him, okay? And this is really, really a fast submission and you have all four of your limbs locked on to his, his ankle. So if you do it quick enough, you know, it's really, really powerful. So I just ask you guys to be very cautious with this because you don't want to hurt any of your training partners if, you, if you're training with them. Uh, because it comes on really quickly and, and the person's not expecting it because the, all their weight is on that foot um, So it, 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 maybe they don't have time to tap. Okay, so just be very careful. It's a very dangerous variation. Okay, so let's, let's look it over guys So I'm gonna be in the traditional Position just like we've always done and now as soon as I start to go This foot is the one that I'm gonna attack. So I'm gonna grab it I go under and I grab my own hand and now a little bit and it's a lot of pressure and if I get here you know, when Chris starts to roll or move, I follow and I crank it here, all right? And here, because my leg is over his leg, it's, it's putting a lot of pressure on his ankle. So if I chase it and I bring his toes down, like as if I'm uh, driving a motorcycle, all the ligaments here get stretched and it's a lot of pain here, okay? I myself got my foot pop in the Nogi Pan Ams from this and I still have like a little bit of swelling over here from more than a year ago already. So it's really, really powerful, okay? Let's look it over again. So we're here, you know, we're doing the belly flop. Boom, I catch it. So I like doing it monkey grip, you know, monkey grip here. And I, I, I grab right here by the toes, not too high, not by the heel, right by the toes. And now I go under and I grab my own, my own foot and then boom, I'm doing like this, okay? You see his foot right here? Grab it, under, boom. Pop, you take it really quick. And here, if he starts to go, again, you can take his back and do all that stuff, all the variations that you've seen already. But this is a really surprise attack. Um, and again, try to do it very slowly because um, uh, the person might not have enough time to tap. Because again, they're not thinking that you're gonna be attacking that same side leg that you're trapping. It's a little bit unconventional in that sense. All right, thank you guys. Okay guys, so um, in the beginning of my jiu-jitsu career, um, I used to watch a lot of like uh, American-based uh, smaller guys such as um, Mike Fowler, uh, Jeb Glover, Simpson Go, who actually just got to train with recently. And a lot, there's uh, so many guys to name, you know, but those are, those are some of my favorites that I used to watch. Alongside of the you know, Leo Vera, Ricardo Vera, Shaolins, you know, all, uh, all these top little Brazilian guys, I used to watch a lot of these American guys, and again, smaller in size. Um, so uh, I was inspired by Mike Fowler. Um, I forgot exactly the name of the sweep, but uh, he used to do um, a, 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 he kind of remind me of a, almost like a, a Jiro from the Dele Hiva. So um, I kind of tweaked it a little bit and I made it uh, possible to be done in Gi and No Gi. Uh, Mike Fowler, he grabs the collar and then he kind of just knocks you down sideways. That's why I saw him do it. Um, this way, um, you're gonna just cross your ankles. So it's pretty much the same principle um, as the, the, the first, how the Jiro came to be. So that's how I kind of saw it, okay? So here, Chris is gonna have one foot up. Just for demonstration, you can do this if Chris is standing too. We're gonna see that in a little bit. Okay, so I'm gonna go for my Dele Hiva guard here. So I'm grabbing Chris's ankle, and now I put my Dele Hiva hook. Now what I'm gonna do is, with this free leg, I'm gonna cross it over the top, and I'm gonna cross it right underneath Chris's knee. Okay, I'm gonna squeeze, make everything tight, and now even if Chris starts to hug me, I'm gonna turn away from him, all right, and I'm gonna knock him over. As soon as I'm here, I'm gonna roll, and again, coming into the leg drag. Okay, leg drag is really, really powerful, guys, so if you can land there after a sweep, it's really, really nice, you know, because right away you can start to pass his guard, okay? And the Mendes are experts at showing you how to finish from here, so um, I suggest, you know, looking at some of their stuff over here, all right? But this is a way to get into the leg drag, right? So, again, we're here. Okay, I'm on my back. Okay, so I'm playing Delahiba here. 
Okay, I'm playing, I can get the sleeve, the collar, whatever. Now I'm gonna cross my feet like this, right under Chris's knee. All right, I keep everything tight. As soon as I do that, if Chris starts to pressure or turn away from me, I go out and look what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna turn my knees to the floor. Look what happens to his knee. It buckles. And this is almost like a kind of like a, a barambolo um, situation here. You can barambolo off of here too, or you can spin. And then from here, coming into the leg drag position here and here, you know, start to pass, pass, take the back, you know, all that stuff. Okay, now if Chris uh, stands up. You know, I do this when people stand up over me. So I play this and then boom, I start to cross. So sometimes I, I, I just control them like this, but then I change my feet. I go here. Okay, my top goes over the bottom. So Mike Fowler, he grabs the collar and he pulls the person down. But from here, I squeeze my knees and then look, I turn and I make Chris's knees buckle. All right? As soon as I'm here, I continue my roll and then I get him on, onto the top position. So, you know, I'm always, you know, if you notice, I bring up, I, throughout this uh, video, I brought up a lot of names. And the reason is this, Jiu Jitsu is not an individual sport. If you, you know, if all you care about is yourself and you never watch other people, you know, it might be a little bit slower to, to grow in that sort of, sort of way. So I really suggest to find people of a similar size to you that are, you know, a few belt ranks higher, or experience is a little bit higher than yours, and watch them and watch what they do. See what they do with their body type, see um, how they play with bigger people, see how they play with faster people, and that can inspire you and you can find new ways about it. And then you can start to kind of make up your own things as you go along and you can make your own persona, okay? This is the really beautiful part about Jiu Jitsu. You know, I don't think it's, you know, ideal to be a clone of somebody, okay? Because if you're, you know, fight that person, it's gonna be so hard to be fighting, it's almost like you're fighting yourself, you know? Um, so it's nice to kind of create your own image, you know, and you can create your own image through your own moves. All right, so, you know, I was using the G-roll with it. Again, you know, I don't, I don't think it's the best idea for somebody to become just a G-roll expert and that's all they do, but I think the G-roll can be added to your game as we saw from all of these different positions, okay? So this, is, guys, is the last variation, and it's the G-roll from the De La Hiva Guard. Um, we jokingly call this the Vanimal Style G, okay? So it's kind of like Animal Style Fries. You know, we went to California, uh, we ate over there, and uh, we also thought that Shake Shack was a little bit better, but we still liked it, you know, so that's, that's where we got the name from, okay? Uh, so thank you guys, and I hope you enjoy. Okay guys, so um, this is the conclusion of the Jewel uh, video series. Um, so I kind of procrastinated this project. I was supposed to finish it a while ago, um, but it never got done, but that's okay. You know, I got to do a lot of other things and I got to actually create some new variations. So now um, it's a little bit more complete than it would have been, you know, six months ago. Um, so now, I, uh, finally, I just want to thank some people, okay? So um, if, if I was to sit here and, and thank everybody that I need to thank, I, the this part will be longer than the whole technique part. So I'm just gonna get through, you know, the, the, the very core. And uh, if you know that you are part of the Giro, you know it. So I'm very thankful to you. And you know, it's been so many people. So, uh, but let me just uh, run through a few. Okay, so first I wanna thank Van Flores because um, A, he did a lot of variations. Uh, he's been helping me with the Giro ever since uh, he saw it, which is from the you know first or second day. Um, plus he was uh, filming this for me too. And he came all the way uh, to Long Island from uh, New Jersey uh, to help me film this okay and uh, it's it's not an easy task okay so thank you to Van first of all uh, second of all I want, I want to uh, thank Chris he was the my assistant my uke uh, it's a Japanese word for the person that you're demonstrating on um, and uh, if some people were confused um, and thought that Chris got promoted in the middle of the video um, it's not true uh, Chris just forgot his belt you know sometimes he's a little bit forgetful so he's actually a brown belt in the shell and a very good one at that and um, at the, he was wearing a pro belt before just because he forgot his belt Okay, um, the, uh, and also, um, it took us two tries, uh, it took us two days to record this video. We just thought we were gonna get it done in one day, but it was just such a big task, so we couldn't get it done in one day. So that's why we had to do a couple of different filmings for it, okay? Um, I also wanna thank um, Dr. Marshall Geldman, you know, for you know uh, being with me from the beginning of my uh, jiu-jitsu journey, and also for all his variations, you know, he's taught me a lot, you know, a lot of little things that I even probably don't realize that he taught me, I'm doing today. A lot of the Kimura stuff, a lot of leg 
leg lock stuff. You know, there's a, a ton of other things too that I uh, can't come to uh, my head right now, but he's helped me a lot, okay? I wanna thank Gus Larea. He's uh, been a very close friend of mine since the beginning. Um, we got our purple belts together. You know, we, uh, we've been training for a really uh, uh, a long time together. And although we don't train often, you know, we train, like I, I haven't trained with him probably in the past year, you know, we're always in touch. And he's one of the few people that I'm, I'm, I'm still very close with. So um, he let us use a school. Um, and to film this and we're really grateful for that you know thank you very much to Gus and uh, his school is Lorea Mixed Martial Arts so it's in East Rockaway Long Island and I really recommend you know he's a really good teacher he's been doing martial arts his whole life you know he uh, he has black belt in karate uh, he's a high level purple belt in jiu-jitsu he's been doing boxing kickboxing for years so I really recommend him okay I want to thank uh, Guy Tak from VHTS um, Guy is one of my sponsors. Um, I wore his uniform here. Uh, Chris wore his uniform. Marshall wore his uniform. Uh, we really like his uniform because it's not like uh, it's not really like in your face. You know, it has a lot of subtle little things, and it, there's a little bit of humor involved in it. So uh, we kind of have like a dry sense of humor, and you know, kind of fits the personality. So I really like it. I want to thank uh, Peak Performance because I started working out there about a year ago, and uh, they've been great to me. So. Uh, thank, thank you to them. Uh, of course, I want to thank my teachers, uh, Vitor Shalin Ribeiro and Marcos Aurelio Galvao Pereira. You know, very long name, uh, but both you know amazing instructors, and you know um, they've been really supportive. You know, it's very easy, in my opinion, for an instructor to just be like, "Oh, that'll never work," or "What that? What are you doing? Why don't you just do this?" You know, and kind of be like like a little bit close-minded. But they've been actually the opposite. They've been like pushing me, and they've been really supportive of this position, and you know they've been really helping me to like be innovative with it. So I really thank uh, thank them for it you know maybe if I was in somewhere else and uh, maybe the people would have you know not really supported it and then I would have just given up on it you know so I think it's important also to find instructors that really you know see uh, and, and push you okay I want to thank all my training partners there's too many to name um, all the people that trust me like uh, students uh, there's a guy named Mitch uh, he was the first person to ever take a private with me and he was the first person I ever showed the G roll to like in a, in a uh, like a student uh, way and uh, he's been really he's been doing it really well with it for a few years you know like, nobody really even knows him he just trains in the school doesn't even compete that much but he's been hitting the G roll for a few years already and he knows a lot of these variations and he's very successful with it. there's a lot of guys like him so he just came to mind because he was uh, the first one um, I want to thank the G system. So it's the gsystem.com for being one of my sponsors. Um, I want to thank my family because uh, uh, they've been like really supportive. I actually graduated with a management and finance degree from college and then I didn't really use it. I just started to kind of like, you know, pursue my martial arts journey. You know, I got I saw like an Instagram picture and it said like, um, take your, you know, forget your briefcase, take your gi and go on your journey or something like that. And I kind of did that and you know, it's, it's, it's hard, it's hard life, you know, uh, because uh, I pay out of my pocket for everything, for the travel, for the expenses, not just me, every martial artist, all the guys I train with, uh, we pay ourselves for the tickets to go to California. Um, when we go, uh, the work, you know, we don't get, you know, paid uh, for this work, you know, we, we're missing work, uh, we're missing our loved ones, all this, so it's pretty expensive, you know, so I want to thank my family. Uh, recently, um, uh, one of my family members that was very close to uh, passed away, so I'm actually uh, dedicating this video to her, it was actually a couple days ago, it was in the middle of uh, videotaping this uh, her name is Galina Leevska so um, uh, I dedicate this video to to her and lastly um, again this is absolutely free you don't have to donate anything if you if you don't feel the need to uh, but if you want to um, uh, my uh, PayPal address is a Eklund it's my last name a e c k l i n at gmail.com I'm gonna have a link on the bottom and if again if you want to donate something uh, feel free the money okay is gonna be used um, now I'm not gonna buy like a new watch or something like that uh, I, I need one but I'm not gonna get one uh, it's gonna be used for for um, training, uh, traveling, um, food, you know, because I, I really like to eat. Um, and the food is going to be for jujitsu, just to, you know, just to make sure we're on the same page. And just anything martial arts related, you know, I want to be doing seminars. I've gone to seminars with a lot of the top guys, you know, where I picked up a lot of the stuff from. And everything adds up, you know. Um, it's, it's pretty expensive. Um, again, I hope you guys enjoy, enjoy this. And this project, um, I'm interested to see where it comes. Um, because I think it's, it, can, it can blow up into something big, you know, but if it doesn't, you know, it doesn't really matter. I wanted to get out there and I want to see some people just hitting this position. If only if one person benefits from this video, it's a success. You know, that's one more person that is going to evolve their game. That's all, that's what Jiu Jitsu is about. Um, a lot of times when I meet people, I tell them um, uh, that you don't realize it, but you're kind of in the Renaissance era of Brazilian Jiu Jitsu because the all time greatest, the Michael Jordans, you know, all the, the really top guys, they're still training with us. They're still in their prime. Uh, like how lucky are you? 
to be able to train with a three, four, five time world champion every single day. You know, in other sports, it's it's not really like that. So Brazilian Jiu Jitsu, we're kind of growing. Uh, if you look at a Brazilian Jiu Jitsu fight from two years ago, and if you look at it from uh, today, it looks completely different. And we have like world champions from like five, six years ago losing to brand new black belts that and these uh, the world champions were black belts before these guys even trained and it kind of doesn't make sense but it's because jiu-jitsu is evolving in such a way so um, in my opinion uh, the jiro is just a small part of this evolution that I want to share with you guys okay so thank you very much and look at the bottom of the screen for the link and again thank you to everybody I'm sure I forgot some people please don't be mad at me uh, please don't unfollow me on Instagram or un unfriend me on Facebook um, I work very hard for those followers and those friends so uh, just believe me that I had you in my heart and um, thank you very much guys